I made a game that combines the rocket jumps of Team Fortress 2 and Quake with the grappling hooks of Spider-Man and Titanfall. Have I combined the two greatest movement mechanics known to man, or have I wasted the last six months of my life? Today, you'll be the judge, as I take you on the journey from a small mobile tech demo to a fully fledged Steam game. By the end of it, you'll have gotten a game for free, and I will have finally shut the f*** up. Let's begin. Every game with a rocket jump in it is a good game, and that's not my opinion, that's in the Bible. But what makes this movement mechanic such a hoot? Well, I think it's human nature. We love testing the bounds of what's possible. I don't know about you, but the first thing I do when I boot up a new game is run backwards just to see how far I can get. A lot of games now are designed specifically for this type of player in mind. As players, we want to test the limits of what's possible. Partly due to natural curiosity and the fun of discovery, but also partly because we just want to see if the game designer's rules will hold up to the test. I think most of you have done that thing where there's an invisible wall in front of you and you kind of jump at it from every angle just to make sure there's no unintended way of getting around it. Or when there's an NPC you know you're not supposed to be able to kill, but you keep trying to anyways because you don't like them. Or when there's some high ground that you can't reach, but you have a rocket launcher, so... Oh, okay, alright, I probably should have expected that. I mean, why should literally shooting yourself in the foot with the strongest gun in the game benefit you? It's a little ridiculous. And yet, during the early playtests of Quake, it kept happening. According to legend, John Romero himself accidentally discovered this technique during a 1995 playtest of Quake. And thus, the rocket jump was born. Not to be confused with the controversial 2015 Roderick jump, the rocket jump was revolutionary at the time. And nowadays, if you add a rocket launcher to your game and you can't jump with it, you just go straight to hell. Do not pass go, do not collect 200 rubles. Now, technically Doom had the first rocket jump, but technically, technically, Doom ran on a 2D engine, so the rockets only sent you horizontally, making it less of a rocket jump and more of a rocket push. But either way, a game would soon come whose rocket jumps would outshine the dooms and quakes of the world. And if you know me, you know I love this game. I'm talking about Raid Shadow Legends. I mean, Team Fortress 2. Please do not click off the video because of that joke. I promise I'm not sponsored by Braid Shadow Legends. Anyways, what was once a novelty mechanic in other games was transformed into the core mechanic for Team Fortress's soldier class. And if you ask me, Team Fortress 2 is the shooter for rocket jump enthusiasts. You can even insta-kill people while rocket jumping by hitting them with a special shovel. <laughs> My, mine is purple. There is no limit to how fast you can go with a rocket jump, but it's not just about going fast. It's about earning your speed, building momentum, dodging obstacles, dodging bullets, managing your health so you don't... Some classes like Scout are fast, but are too consistently fast for my taste. There's no building momentum, it's just run forward quickly by pressing W. But just check this out. That. That right there. That is insane. Once you get good at rocket jumping, you stop seeing maps as battlefields and start seeing them as like Super Mario levels, trying to figure out what platforms you can reach from where and what route gets you to the front line the fastest. Health packs stop being the thing that lets you keep fighting and instead become the thing that lets you keep rocket jumping. Some people say soldier players don't have brains, and while there is some evidence to support this hypothesis, I think the reason this stereotype exists is because eventually rocket jumping just becomes second nature to us. We can do it without thinking. And if a soldier player doesn't have to think, they're not gonna. There's a huge community of players who've made entire maps and game modes built solely around rocket jumping alone. Let's just put it this way, there's no other shooter game you can play basketball in and have it actually be fun. TF2 Soldier is the closest thing to a 3D platformer inside of an FPS game that exists today. And that is why I give Team Fortress 2 a solid 4 out of 5 on Goodreads. Do not skim. So now you know why rocket jumping is one of the greatest movement mechanics of all time, but Knowing is only half the battle, and you may have won the battle, but I will win the other half of... I made a 2D platformer with rocket jumps in it. I've always been a big fan of the 2D platformer. Run around, jump on shit, divorce your wife, what's not the love? But I've always felt restricted in most of them. There's always a limit to how fast you can go. The whole reason I love rocket jumping is because it breaks limits, and not many 2D platformers have given me that same feeling of freedom that the rocket jump has. Take Super Meat Boy for instance, I love this game, but it doesn't provide a lot in terms of speed. Meat Boy moves at the same speed all the time without any concern for preserving momentum. He's more like Scout than he is like Soldier. There is a sprint button in the game, but I just hold it down for my entire playthrough because there's never any incentive to go slow. 2D Mario games do the same thing, a sprint button that's never not being used. When you've only got one speed, certain levels feel more like stop and go traffic rather than a continuous movement. 
And that's totally fine, I, I don't think that's a problem with those games, but often I find myself wishing upon a star for a game with no stops, no max speed, and no limits, where the only difficulty slider is how fast you're willing to go. But I can't see stars through all this light pollution, so f*** me, I guess. And this brings us to Thunder Jumper. I built this prototype back in 2020, but ended up abandoning the project to go work on something else. Because, I mean, why would I finish something if I could just start a new project? Over and over and over again, without ever accomplishing anything. Anyways, I eventually figured out that this whole not accomplishing anything strategy was... Uh, sucked, so I ended up going back to the project in 2023, rolling up my sleeves and saying, look, this is my town now, buddy, and you may be the sheriff, but I'm... I went back to work on the game. So after dusting off this three-year-old project, I spruced up the movement, added some art, and officially titled it Thunder Jumper. You know it's a good title because it rhymes. Half my games rhyme and that's half too little. I was really happy with how the rocket jumps felt in game. It was honestly fun to just jump around this little test map, and that's kinda how I knew this game had something going for it. But ever since the beginning, I knew this wasn't the end. There was another movement mechanic right around the corner that I had to have to make this game feel complete. The rocket jumps gave you as much momentum as you liked, but they weren't great at preserving that momentum. Enter the gra- Team Fortress 2 has the best rocket jumps known to man, so wouldn't adding a grappling hook to the game build onto an already perfect movement system? Well, let me answer that question with a question. No. See, TF2 tried the whole grappling hook thing, but players weren't impressed. We wanted Carlson and got fucking Dirk Valentin. TF2's hook is functionally equivalent to the Zelda hookshot from 1998. Where is the momentum? Where is the swinging? Where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? Maybe she's in Speedrunners, which is notorious for its grappling hook. But again, this hook isn't really physics based, it totally changes your angle and momentum whenever you use it. I want something that flows a little bit more. Maybe that new Spider-Man game has what I want. No, um, not really. I mean, web slinging is fun and all, but you don't have to actually aim your shots, and there's basically no way to mess it up, so it kind of just feels like flying with extra steps. Just Cause 3 does the same thing. The grappling hook is super fun, but it completely negates gravity. You literally float in the air for half a second before you shoot it, and then you blast off in a straight line at the speed of sound. It makes me feel more like Superman than Spider-Man, and it also has the bubsy wingsuit, so yeah. Why do all these hooks feel so weird and clunky? This just isn't how I expect a hook to act. I mean, surely there's a game out there that can- Titanfall 2, now this is my kind of game. Wall run, ground sliding, and of course, grappling hooks. Titanfall's hook slowly reels itself in after being cast, which adds that extra little bit of momentum without altering your trajectory, which means swinging is super intuitive and natural. Check this shit out. C come on, do I even need to say anything here? Look at this. You can attach it to any surface in the game, including enemy players. You get two uses before it has to recharge, so you can swing in, hook a guy, and send him to God all before you can say lickety split. There are also, uh, titans in Titanfall, which are hard to kill without being in a titan yourself. Unless, of course, you have a grappling hook, in which case you can swing around attack on titan style and board them for a quick takedown, all before they can say... A game with a grappling hook as fine as this one deserves to be cared for, which is why Titanfall 2's owner, EA, has taken great care to preserve and protect the Titanfall 2 servers, ensuring that players from all walks of life from everywhere around the globe can sit down and enjoy the fruits this game has to offer. Okay, so apparently there was this year-long period where joining any Titanfall 2 server would dox you and open your home network to cyber attacks, according to this lawyer. <laughs> The media. Well, at least the hook is still cool. Now that I've found my muse, I can put it in my own game. I decided the hook wouldn't add any momentum on its own, and instead would just be a completely neutral physics tool. It does retract, but only when the player naturally moves towards the pivot point. This made it really easy for new players to learn. Instead of playtesters asking me how to do this or how to do that, they just asked me to stop breathing so heavily into my microphone. It was a great system, really. I wanted every part of the game to build on these two mechanics, rockets and hooks, so these cloud projectiles that kill you can also be rocket jumped off of and grapple hooked. I kinda took inspiration from Mario 3's cannonballs which kill you from below in the side, but can also be jumped on to gain height. In fact, every hazard in the game can be rocket jumped off, creating this floor is lava kinda pogo mechanic inspired from TF2 jump maps. And now with everything programmed and ready to go, I could finally move on to building levels. Aside from the intense, soul-crushing anxiety that level design gives me, it's actually pretty fun. 
I had to ask myself, should I keep it linear and go with the Super Meat Boy Celeste kind of design, or should I open it up more and go with the Hollow Knight Castlevania kind of design? Or should I just say fuck it and hit him with that Bubsy 3D shit? I don't know. I experimented and eventually decided against all of these. Remember what I said about other platformers only having one speed and all the levels feeling like stop and go traffic? Well, I tried to build all my levels around speedrunning so that each could be feasibly completed in 15 seconds or less. You even get a reward for doing so. Finishing in 15 seconds has never been this much fun. I wanted players to feel like they were riding one big wave of momentum rather than stopping to line up the perfect jump for each challenge. This was not easy to do, and some levels are much better at this than others. If you play the free demo for yourself, you'll see what I mean. Most people say that level 3 is the best in the game, but between you and me, they haven't discovered the secret 6 hour revolutionary war theme level, so what do they know? Well, with all that work and Unity behind me, I'm finally ready to release the free demo for my new Unity game, Thunder Jumper. Fuck.